Sure. Um, so in this problem, we are given an equation of a traveling wave in a string. So it's a transverse wave traveling in a string in a positive x direction. And this is the equation. Uh, y x of t displacement is equal to 0.00327 sine of 72.1 x minus 2.72 t. And in this equation, x and y are given in meters and time t is given in seconds. Okay? Uh, so in the first two parts, uh, we need to find all the parameters uh, of this equation. And it is recommended that we do it by uh, rewriting this equation in a different form. So we want to bring this equation to this form. Y x of t is equal to some amplitude a sine k x minus v t. Okay? So we're going to bring this equation to that form. So y x of t is equal to 0 0.0327, that's the amplitude, sine, and I'm going to take this 72.1 out of the parentheses, so 72.1 x minus, and if you divide this 272 by 72.1, uh, you should get 0 0.0. 377, and I'm keeping everything to three significant figures here t time and the parenthesis closed. Okay, so this is the form, this is the same equation but in this form. Uh, well, there are a few things that you can conclude from here. First of all, the amplitude is equal to 0 0.0327 meters. Uh, the wave number is 72.1 inverse meters, velocity of the wave is 0 0.0377 meter per second. So um, the next thing we can find from here is the uh, wavelength. Well, wavelength is related to the wave number, so k is equal to 2 pi over lambda, or lambda is equal to 2 pi over k, so 2 pi over uh, this number k, which is 72.1. 72.1, and if you calculate for that, you get uh, 0 0.0871 uh, meter. Again, I'm keeping everything to 3 sig fig here. So now we know the uh, wavelength. The next thing we need to calculate is the uh, frequency of the wave. Well, we know that frequency is related to the velocity as follows, lambda f, so f is equal to v over lambda, we know v, that's 0 0.0377 over lambda, that's here, 0 0.0871, and if you calculate for that, this gives you 0 0.433 hertz. That's the frequency. Um, and the next thing we need to find is the period, which is inverse of the frequency. So you just substitute for f, and you get 2.31 seconds. Okay, so now we found all the uh, parameters of the wave. So the next, well, an important thing to note here is that this velocity here is the velocity of the wave itself. Okay, it's the velocity of the wave with which it's traveling in the positive x direction. Now, the reason why it's traveling in the positive x direction is because we have a minus sign here. Um, well, the, the next thing is to find the functional dependence of the velocity of a particle in the wave. Okay, so that's, that is the next step. Uh, well, let's erase this. velocity of the particle will be a function of the position of that particle and time t, right? So all we need to do is to take 
uh, uh, partial time derivative of the displacement. So that's dy x t dt. Well, if I take a derivative of this, what do I get? I get 0 0.0327 times negative of this, so minus 2.72, and sine becomes cosine. So cosine 72.1 x minus 2.72 t. So if you simplify this, this becomes 0 0.0327. Uh, well, actually, we can multiply. So if you multiply that, uh, you get minus 8.89 times 10 to the power uh, minus 3 cosine 72.1 x minus 2.72 t. Okay, so that is the uh, velocity of the particle and is measured in meter per second. Um, the next thing is the acceleration and we follow the same logic so if we know the velocity we just take another partial derivative of velocity with respect to time. Well, we, we get another factor of 2.72 with the minus here so minus times minus gives us plus but then cosine becomes sine with a negative sign, so we get uh, another minus here. So after the algebra, you should get this minus 0 0.0242 sine 72.1 x minus 2.72 t. And that's measured in meter per second squared. So now you have a functional dependence of uh, velocity of a particle and acceleration. So by substituting for x and t you can calculate instantaneous velocities and acceleration for any particle at any uh, given instance of time. And the last thing now is to uh, make a graph of position, velocity and acceleration for time t equal zero. So for time t equals zero, um, displacement becomes x of zero, 0 0.00327 sine of 72.1x. Velocity becomes minus 8.89 times 10 to the power minus 3 cosine of 72.1x and acceleration x of 0 is minus 0.0242 sine of 72.1x now the question is asking to draw the graphs uh, on the same plot so our y-axis will be, um, well, it will not have a unit as such, but just for reference. So let's say that this is our vertical axis, but let's not call it y-axis, but this one is our x-axis. Uh, well, if you look at this, uh, the argument for all the sine and cosine functions is the same. And if we look at the first one, the sine function looks like this. And this corresponds to x equals 0. So this is x equals 0. And then uh, this point corresponds to 0 0.0436. And you can calculate it by just dividing pi by the 72.1 and this is 2 pi divided by 72.1 okay so this now is the y x of 0 um, you can do the same thing but for v so v is a cosine function and we start from the negative value of we start from the negative value of v at x0, so it goes like that. 
and looks well if you draw it it's gonna look something like this okay so it will have a maximum value at this 0 0.0436 uh, so this is our uh, v of x and finally um, acceleration is also a sine function but uh, with a negative sign so it goes like this so this is our acceleration at time t equals zero well uh, if you note for example uh, the blue line which is velocity uh, the slope of the blue line at this point is equal to zero and that's why the acceleration is zero so you can double check uh, this graph by looking at some uh, specific uh, values of x. So that's it.